Hola, bon dia, Carl Monson here live from the Korea Palace Hotel. As you can see behind me, a little bit of the Belle Epoque Splendor that uh, characterizes this amazing place. And I'm going to attempt to do the Good Morning Portugal radio show from here this morning. And uh, your executive production would really help if you want to shout out to me um, from wherever you are uh, watching, listening to this morning. Um, it's a bit of a technological feat for me, um, but I just wanted to bring you the, the, the splendor of this place. It's quite incredible. And uh, to do the show this morning on this uh, Carnival holiday day here in Portugal. It's a public holiday. A few more people in the hotel than usual. Uh, some day trippers, some Portuguese people. It's popular both with Portuguese people and uh, global tourists. And it's rooted in the roaring 20s. So that's my uh, bit of vocabulary today, Portuguese for the Roaring Twenties. And uh, Dorados Anos Twenties. And there's a beautiful interior shot of the, just a breakfast in there actually, that's the dining room uh, of the, uh, I don't think I am sharing that, am I? Oh yes, I'm, yeah. Um, Dorados Anos Vinti, uh, which is uh, Portuguese for 20. Slight, sorry, I'm talking in a slightly muted way because I'm in a, a hotel lobby here. I don't want to make as much noise as I normally do. Um, when I'm doing the show uh, from the GMP studio back at base but just a minute away from home here and had breakfast in this delightful dining room here and I think that's lovely Portuguese for the roaring 20s or the golden age is Dorado Janos Vinti so there you go not much more to say about that it's it, it's mainly about the visuals today and uh, I want to share a bit more with you about the um, the hotel itself so um, let me share their website with you as well. And uh, there you go. It's the Korea Palace Hotel, Spa and Golf Course. Uh, golf Course just next door. You may have seen I posted up a beautiful picture of a deer. That is in their garden, just to the left of the building you see there. I first encountered that building. It looked a little bit like The Shining on the day I came. A huge hotel in the middle of nowhere, it seemed. I, I drive down the avenue which is actually where the um, Casa do Deer is today, I'm going to share with you, on the avenue of plane trees. So you come into Korea off the, I think it's fair to say, IC2 road, which becomes the N1, which is a trucker route. You know, it's, uh, all of life is there, and I also commend that to you as a way of exploring and touring Portugal. Get off the toll roads. Um, prepare yourself for life on the uh, trunk roads, are they called, uh, the IC2 truckers on there you've got to be, keep your wits about you it's, it's busy there's a lot of roundabouts there's all sorts of hazards dogs animals people pushing hay carts whatever Portuguese life is there and that's why it's such a good idea to use those roads and, and really see what's going on the toll roads are great for getting to places really fast and they are they are a joy in their own way and you have them to yourselves a lot of the time but uh, if you go on the IC2, for example, or the Route 66, you know, going from north to south and that old road that used to be, the, these are the supply route, the old supply routes. Uh, you see so much character in life there and uh, it's well worth the extra time. In. And this is where Korea is, it's just the IC2 between um, north of Coimbra and, and south of Aveiro. And you drive off the IC2, you take a hairpin round and you come to the station which is on the uh, Linha Norte, the northern line of uh, Portugal. There's the station, which was uh, opened, I, I discovered this morning, at the same time as the uh, hotel was opened, uh, with its 400 rooms. And it big promise to the public, you know, this is an amazing time to, to, to be opening a, a venue of this kind, in 1926, I believe. And very exciting. Anyone who was anyone in Portugal at that time would have come to the, this Korea Palace Hotel. And you can still feel that when you're coming out. It, it's amazing. You know, these, these um, display cabinets behind me here are full of the pictures of, of the old days. And there are lots of display cabinets. Um, if I can just give you, yeah, tip that view going towards the lobby there. There are some beautiful uh, artifacts of the golden age of this hotel, the golden age itself, the Belle Epoque period the roaring 20s and what an, what an amazing time sociologically that was for the world not just portugal but portugal had its own enjoyment and representation of that as well here in this very building which is i just think is wonderful so you come down the avenue of plane trees 
And on your left is this wonderful building. And I came in the autumn, winter time, sort of austere and stark with no leaves on the trees. But at the height of summer, as you can guess, this is absolutely delightful, look at that. And there in this garden here is a swan. Around the back are deer and goats and livestock. There was a stork, I posted a picture yesterday of a stork that was, I think was building a nest on the ancient uh, chimney stack that was probably used for heating uh, before. So there you go, let's describe it as a true European jewel of the great hotel industry, Dorado Shalini, which I was telling you about just before, which brings us all the comfort to a time with which, conveniently located in the north of Coimbra, between Lisbon and Porto, and next to the A1 uh, exit in Meliada. Oh yeah, you can get here not just via the ICT, but the A1 road as well, which is a lot faster. Constitutes a unique and an excellent hotel experience, whether for an escape weekend or for a family stay in a peaceful and relaxing environment. And that is what Korea is. A large, large private park uh, behind in vineyards and by the Gulf of Korea. It is the refuge where you can enjoy comfortable accommodation. A bit more than comfortable. These rooms are great. I have stayed here. Uh, one of the main spas in the center of the country. Fascinating original public areas, fully preserved gastronomic services and of superior quality passionate golf and unparalleled outdoor leisure space all within a framework of rare artistic and scenic beauty. You'd expect that sort of hyperbole on a hotel website, but it's true. I'm not sure about the golf course at the moment, to be fair, um, as yet to be open for the summer season, but there is a golf course next door. Uh, check whether it's open or not, should you come. But look, open in 1926, target of a spectacular and careful project of integral remodeling and recently reopened preserving and honoring all its mysticism, classic ambiance and grandeur, and thus regaining its own status as an essential part of the Hotel Panorama National. I would say international. If you love hotels, and the experience, this place gets simply much in line with New Orleans with all that glamour, all that jazz. The play at the breakfast room this morning, beautiful uh, Ella Fitzgerald just playing softly in the background, get a sense of the past. But you can also have a great stay here now. And you're in the town of Korea, where I live. Not, I'm, I'm not saying it's a great town because it's where I live, but I live here because it's a beautiful place. Um, and Portuguese people love it. And global tourists who come love it, but I think more international tourists need to know about it. It's, it is a place. And uh, very good for stopping off for, for road trips. Uh, okay, or tra uh, train travel. That's the other thing. Of course, you know, people don't want to fly so much now. You can come here by train, uh, which is a real bonus, an absolute bonus. Uh, the, um, some of the pictures of the hotel. Look, there you go. There's your spa experience that you can have. It's got an outdoor Art Deco swimming pool, um, original, which is so beautiful. It just reminds me of New York for some reason. You know, the, some of the older sort of 20s um, pictures that you see of... Um, People enjoying themselves packed into, you know, tight spaces, Coney Island or whatever. Um, that period, you know, the 20s and 30s in America, um, you get a resonance of that here as well. And I think people were coming from all over the world to be here in the 20s. It must have been an incredible journey to cruise here across the sea and then make your way to this incredible place. But there's the beautiful restaurant. I think that's the bit I want to concentrate on. You can, of course, enjoy the I had uh, wines because that's what uh, goes on here. That's not letting me uh, do any more in the restaurant. You're going to have to come and check it out for yourself. Oh, there we go. Um, isn't that beautiful? That's the uh, interior of the uh, restaurant there, the main dining room. But there are other parts to it. That's the Belle Epoque restaurant. Um, sorry if that scrolling's a little bit annoying. There's the lobby bar. Beautiful to sit in the lobby uh, where you come into the hotel. The American bar, you want to see a jazz band playing in there, don't you? The pool bar, there's a bar outside by the pool. There you go. That's uh, just to give you a flavour of uh, the Korea Palace Hotel uh, here, obviously, in Korea. And, of course, the Basaka Palace up the road, which you must visit as well, in the beautiful gardens. It's in a huge native woodland, the Basaka Palace, of uh, ancient trees, ancient Portuguese woodland, well worth a visit as well. Come do these two. You could come here by train and still get a taxi up to the Basaka Palace, you know, mix and match it, have a night in each hotel. And we stayed here with the family. I think it was 90 euros or thereabouts for five of us, including breakfast, which isn't so bad, is it? And I think a friend of mine stayed here recently for 50 or 60 euros midweek. So it's really good value. 
um, in this uh, wonderful hotel. I might do a walkthrough towards the end if the uh, Wi-Fi holds up so I can show you some of these relics. But before we do that, um, let me tell you, because I want to promote Korea as a place to come to. Um, it's uh, an absolutely wonderful little town. And it, I think it's okay to say that it's seen better days. You know, this is not an unusual thing um, in Portugal, really, that, um, you know, there was a, the big, the big uh, 2008 crash. Um, times have been tough and, and a lot of businesses suffered then. And there's a lot of grandeur that, like, it, it's just hanging on in there that with the right sort of investment and attention and numbers of visitors could just be lifted back up uh, onto the world stage. And uh, that's, what, that's my hope for Korea. Uh, I'm involved in a renovation uh, project here of a, of, a, of a tiny pension, you know, small hotel B&B building. And there are others, and I want to show you uh, one of those now. But I think it's an amazing place to come. It's got so much going for it. It has a beautiful um, set of shops, you know, local shops, bakery, cafe, uh, butchers, bakers, the whole lot. And some great bars, um, really good bars, uh, craft beer, at Camelo's Bar, um, Dom Joao Cafe, Kinabiba. Lots of fantastic places to, um, to be uh, eating and enjoying yourself. And you can buy provisions at uh, Christina's beautiful little shop as well. Uh, there's a post office here. Uh, there's the railway line, as I mentioned. It's a great place where you've got everything and you still feel fairly rural. Uh, and you can get to the seaside uh, 20 kilometers or so from Toka and uh, Tosha or Toka. I can't remember what, I, what it is in the Toka and uh, Mira as well. So it's got it all, you know, it's a really, you know, nowhere has everything and nowhere is perfect. But, um, you know, as, as an all round holistic view, this is a great place to consider if you are coming to Portugal. And um, there are some buildings just hanging on in there that could do with some TLC.